find an interval on which the vector function is continuous. The vector function is given as r of t is equal to, well, the x component is the square root of t plus 1, and the y component is 1 over t. For a vector function to be continuous, each component must be continuous. So what does it mean that each component must be continuous? Well, just like when we were looking at continuity in our calculus class. Continuity means, one, that the function exists everywhere in an interval. And two, the limit of our function, the limit as we take our function to any point in the interval, must be equal to the value of our function at that point in the interval. So our function must exist at all points in the interval the limit of our function must exist at all points in our interval And the limit must be equal to the value of our function at all points in the interval. So what this means is we should look at the intervals in which each of our components is defined. And we could start off by treating them independently. For example, let's look at the x component. The x component is given by the function square root of t plus 1. We know that for this function to exist, the square root must be defined for real numbers. So this is defined for values of t plus 1 greater than or equal to 0, or values of t greater than or equal to minus 1. Now that makes sense because if we were to sketch our square root function on a, well, we will say an x versus t graph where t comes to minus 1, 1, two, three, four, for example, and this is one, two. Our graph would look something like this. This is the graph of square root of t plus one. And here I would do a closed circle at t equals minus 1. So our curve exists everywhere in this interval for all values of t greater than or equal to 1. Now let's look at the y component. The y component is the function 1 over t. We know for this function to be defined, t cannot be equal to 0. So this means that the y component can take on all values of t from minus infinity to 0, not including 0, and then from 0 to infinity. Well, that makes sense because if you look at the graph of the y component, 
where y is on the vertical axis, t is on the horizontal axis. You would recognize that the graph would look something similar to this. Notice 1 over t is defined for values of y greater than 0 and values of y less than 0. So we now know where our y component is defined, and it's continuous everywhere in these intervals. And we also know where our x component is defined, it's continuous everywhere for values of t is greater than or equal to minus 1. So where each of these components is continuous, our vector function will be continuous. Let's put that together. I like to illustrate it on a number line. Remember, we said t can take on values for greater than or equal to minus 1 for our x component. That would be the interval including minus 1 going to infinity. Let's graph that on our number line. So here's t, here's 0, this will be minus 1, this will be 1, 2, so on and so forth. Starting from minus 1 with a closed circle, this arrow represents values of t greater than or equal to minus 1. Now let's do the y. For y, we said that t has to range in value from minus infinity to 0, and then from 0 to infinity. So we cannot, and in other words, that means t cannot be equal to 0. So when we graph this, we cannot have values of t equal to 0. So I'll use an open circle. But we can have all of these values to the right. So t can be greater than 0. And we can have all of these values to the left t can be less than 0. Where these two intervals overlap is where our function is continuous. Let's divide this up into regions. So I see a region here. It looks like t equals 0 is our dividing line. I see that for values of t less than minus 1, our x component is not defined. So we just have to look at the two overlapping regions. And we see that there are two regions that both of our, or two intervals rather, where both of our components are defined. One interval ranges from minus 1 to 0, including minus 1. So I'll put that down. I'll put the interval from minus 1 less than or equal to t less than 0 is one interval in which both our functions are defined, both of our functions are continuous in that interval, so our vector function will be continuous in that interval. We also have another interval from 0 to infinity. So 0 less than t less than infinity is our second region in which our vector function is defined and is continuous because both components are defined and continuous in that interval. So we could say the intervals 
in which R of T with components T plus one for the X and one over T for the Y component is continuous R minus one less than or equal to T less than zero and we could just say t is greater than zero.